Hi there. My name is Insurer Premium and welcome to my lecture videos on public sector accounting and finance. In these lecture videos, I have this divided the syllabus of public sector accounting and finance into 13 modules, into 13 modules. So in each module, we are going to discuss each of the major topics of the syllabus. And so attached to every video or each of these videos in the modules is a study material. What is the study material? The study material is the book that I authored on public sector accounting and finance. I'm a published author. My book is listed on Amazon and you can go to Amazon and check it out there. But in addition to the lecture videos, you're going to have all my book, that is the book that I publish in public sector accounting and finance, divided into modules attached to each of these videos so that offline when you are in your home when you don't want to watch the video you can go through these study materials and be studying them and everything that i'm going to be teaching in this uh, subject from the beginning from module one as you're watching to the 13th module is going to come from the book it's going to come from the book every discussion every question that i'm going to be solving it's going to come from the book now let me give you an overview of what or how the course is designed to be as I mentioned earlier I have divided the whole syllabus of public sector accounting and finance into 13 modules into 13 modules so there are 13 different videos attached to each video is a study material that you have to get that you have to go through to be able to complete the whole course in public sector accounting and finance now what are the divisions that I have done one we will be discussing issues about the introduction to public sector accounting and finance we will be looking at the basis of public sector accounting we will discuss the issues about the regulatory framework now the basis of public sector accounting has to do with issues such as the um, um, accounting uh, basis that we use accrual accounting modified accrual uh, 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 basis we will look at the cash basis the modified cash basis in that order then we will come to model three that is the regulatory framework this is where we look at issues about the regulatory uh, framework of the public sector accounting and finance and consider the role, the responsibility, duties that various institutions and uh, authorities play in public sector accounting. Uh, some of these include the parliaments, we, we will discuss issues about the Minister of Finance, we will discuss issues about the Auditor General, the Controller Accountant General, the Executive Arm of Government and other uh, authorities in relation to that under regulatory framework. From there, we will shift our, our attention to public sector accounting systems. This is where we, we will discuss issues such as vote accounting, fund accounting, commitment accounting, environmental accounting, look at the advantages and disadvantages of all these um, accounting systems that are used in the public sector. From there, we will look at the sources of revenue to the government. So we will look at the various sources of revenue to the central government and the various sources of revenue to the local authority, that is the Metropolitan Municipal District Assemblies. Then we will consider issues about the government payment processes, that is how expenditure is paid, the various ways through which government controls public expenditure. We will consider the various methods in relation to that. From there, we will come to one of the major uh, topics of the subject, public sector accounting and finance, that is the public fund. So we will consider the public fund of Ghana, which constitutes the consolidated fund, the contingency fund, and any other fund like the petroleum fund, the uh, Ghana Education Trust Fund, like the road fund. And we will consider a lot of funds and we will look at the constituents of all these funds, the objective of all these funds, how payments are made out of all these funds, and how money uh, are paid into all these funds and the various roles that these funds play in the public sector uh, financial management of the government. From there, we will discuss one of the key areas as well, which is referred to as the public procurement in Ghana, focusing on the Public Procurement Act. So with public procurement, we will discuss various issues in relation to public procurement. We will discuss issues such as the various structures or the structure of public procurement in Ghana. We will look at the role that the Public Procurement Authority plays. We will look at public procurement uh, uh, entities. We will look at, or oh, that is procurement entities. We will discuss issues in relation to the procurement procedure or the processes. We will discuss issues about 
uh, methods or approaches to procurement that is the sole sourcing, competitive, we will talk about national tendering, international tendering, all these will be discussed under public procurement. Then from there we will come to accountability and value for money, another value for money, another major aspect of the syllabus. So. We will talk about how accountability is measured in or determined in the uh, in the public sector. We will discuss issues such as some corporate governance principles in relation to accountability. Then we will look at the concept of value for money, which means that or uh, which you should know that every public sector institution or organization or body must make sure that any expenditure that is incurred there is a value for money that is achieved and we're going to look at the three e's of value for money economy efficiency and effectiveness from there we will talk about one key aspect of the syllabus there are a lot of key aspects though um, the government's budgetary and budgetary control so we will look at the budgeting and budgetary control both at the local government level and then at the central government level then from there we will discuss issues in relation to financial reporting in public sector that is how public sector uh, financial statements are prepared now i have divided that into two so you're going to get two different videos on in relation to that particular uh, module in in the in the syllabus that is a financial reporting the a aspect is in relation to looking at the overview of the international public sector accounting standards uh, and then from there we will look at the real financial statement that are prepared how we prepare the financial performance statement of financial performance how we prepare statement of financial position how we prepare receipt and payment accounts and how we do some issues about um, various analysis in the public sector uh, accounting so that is about the 12th module the 12th module and then finally the 13th module will be PPP, that is a public private partnership agreement. That is the agreement that government enters into with private sectors in order to provide infrastructure facilities to you and I for us to use to make our lives better. So these are what we are going to go through or the overview of the 13 modules in the public sector accounting and finance. I have divided it in such a way that so that we will be able to cover everything, spend more time with everything that we have to cover. And at the end of the module, you got to stay with me because I'm going to also add the examination analysis document for public sector accounting and finance. The reason is that the fact that you are going to go through all these modules does not mean everything in those modules are going to be examined in the exam hall. So in order to increase your chances of passing, I'm going to also attach to the final module, that is module 13, the examination analysis document informing you and telling you about the various uh, things that we expect the examiner to set questions on so that after going through all the modules you can focus on these key areas you can speed uh, watch some of the videos again so that you can get the understanding of various key areas that we expect the examiner to set the questions on in this examination setting so once you understand the overview of the syllabus and what we intend to achieve or do, let's begin the journey with the first module. Let's begin the journey with the first module. So, introduction to public sector accounting and finance. So, what is public sector accounting and finance? What is it about? What is the subject about? Now, at the end of this first module, there are objectives of the module. So, at the end of the module, you should be able to one explain the scope of the subject. That is what public sector accounting and finance is about. Two. You should be able to discuss the objectives of public sector accounting. Three, you should be able to explain the types of information produced by public sector accounting uh, organizations or entities. And then four, you should be able to state the users of public sector accounting and information and their information needed. And then finally, you should be able to explain the concept of privatization. So these are what you have to be able to stand out the key nuggets that you are going to get in relation to the module one, which is refers to as the introduction to public sector accounting and finance. So what is public sector accounting? To define public sector accounting, the simplest definition of a public sector is that it refers to all organizations which are not privately owned and operated, but which are established, run, and financed by government on behalf of the public. So a public sector, the public sector refers to all organizations. One, they are not privately owned. Two, they are not privately operated, 
right? So they are not privately controlled, but they are established, run, and financed by the government on behalf of the people. So public sector, the public sector refers to these institutions. So any institution that is not established by an individual or group of individual, that is not financed by an individual or group of individual, that is not or operated by uh, an individual or group of individual that is done by the government can be referred to as what? A public sector organization. But when we are discussing the issue about public sector, the subject of government comes in. So what is government? What is government? Government refers to all the collection of public institutions established and given the authority to run the affairs of the country. So the government refers to the collection of public institutions that we have established so that they can give the end can be given authority to uh, run the affairs of the country so there are government institutions that is looking at education there are government institutions that is looking at agriculture there are government institutions that is looking at finance there are government institutions that is looking at budgeting there are government institutions that are looking at various sectors of the economy these are together what we refer to as government then the next key definition that we have to look at is government accounting. So what is government accounting? Government accounting refers to all financial documents and records of public institutions that relates to the collection of taxpayers' money and the analysis, control of expenditure, administration of trust fund, management of government stores, and all financial responsibility and duties of the relevant organs that is a huge definition but it simply means that government accounting refers to the financial documents the recording of transactions in the public sector so how do we record transaction by the ministry of finance ministry of education ministry of uh, uh, the ministry of youth and employment parliament the executive arm of government the judiciary how do we keep the records and the financial statements of all these uh, institutions, public institutions, are what we refer to as the government accounting. So in a nutshell, we can say that government accounting involves the process of recording, analyzing, classifying, summarizing, communicating, and interpretation of financial information about government in aggregate and in details Recording all transactions involving the receipt, transfer, and disposition of public funds and property. So these are what we have to understand when we talk about. So the public sector is all organizations that are not operated, financed by a private individual or group of private individual, but they are operated, established, and financed by the government on behalf of the people. Then what is a government? Government refers to all the collection of all institutions that are established and given the authority to run the affairs of the country. Then government accounting refers to the processes through which the financial records or documents are kept by all these government institutions in the public sector. Right. So let's look at the nature and objective of government accounting. What is the objective of government accounting? There are about seven of them or six of them that we have to discuss. One, to fulfill legal regulatory requirements. Now, the law requires that government accounts and prepare financial statements annually. So, in order for the government to fulfill that legal regulatory requirement, so that we will know that this was the budget, this was how much that the government was able to spend, uh, were we able to achieve value for money? So, by law, in the 1992 Constitution, government is required to prepare financial statements. So, in order for the government to be able to prepare the financial statement, there has to be what we refer to as government accounting. So, the first objective of government accounting is to fulfill legal regulatory requirements. Two, to perform the stewardship function. Remember, government is not having its own money. So the money that the government uses to manage the affairs of the country are the money for the public, right? We, we use that money or the money belongs to you and I. So it is our money. It's our money. So it belongs to you and I. So if it is our money, then how do we 
make sure government takes care of that money? How do we make sure government manages that money well? So in order to perform the stewardship function so that government will now come and say that, all right, you gave me X amount of money, I spent Y amount of money, and this is how much I borrowed outside, this is how much I spent. So that is the second objective. So one, to fulfill legal regulatory requirement, and two, to perform the stewardship function. The third thing, the third thing is to enable government to plan well the future activities and programs of the nation. Yes, if you're able to account for the expenditure, we're able to account for the revenue, then government can be able to plan and say that, all right, we have this infrastructure, we don't need it any longer, we need this infrastructure. Okay, uh, this is our sources of finance. Okay, we're gonna need another source of finance. So it en enables the government to plan about the country. Third, uh, to provide a process of controlling the use of the financial and other resources. Yes, because if we prepare the financial statement, we will be able to determine how much money was apportioned or was appropriated or was allocated in relation to a certain spending unit and then how much money was actually spent so that we can realize and see the variance in it, whether we're going to push more money, we're going to push less money, or we're going to measure their uh, control, how much they're going to spend in that order. Then the next one is to provide a means by which actual performances may be compared with what? Targets, yes, because we gave you X amount of money. How much have you spent so that we can manage your performance to see whether value for money has been achieved in the public sector? So these are some of the objectives. A couple of them as well are in your handouts. The next one has to do with purpose of public sector accounting. Now, objective and purpose are similar, but I decided to separate it for the objective of what I want to undertake. So when we talk about purpose of public sector accounting, it includes the following. One, demonstrating the proprietary of transactions and their conformity with laws and established rules and regulation. So the reason why we undertake public sector accounting is also to show that all transactions undertaken are in line with various laws, are in line with various regulations, and are in line with various established systems in place. Two, measuring current performance. I've already mentioned about that. Providing useful information for the efficient and effective control and management of government operations. Yes, and then we can talk about facilitating audit exercises. To be, to be carried out in the public sector. So these are what you have to understand when we refer to as the purpose of public sector accounting in that order. The next thing we want to discuss has to do with the types of public sector organizations. Now, what are the types of public sector organizations? Among other things, there are basically four types of public sector organizations. We have what we call the international levels, we have what we call the national, then we have what we call regional, and we have what we call the local. Now, let's look at how these can be taken up in, in one bit or one after the other. So, government institutions or organizations can be subcategorized into the following. One, we have what we call the central government. What is the central government? The central government consists of the governing body which defines the territorial authority. So the central government includes issues such as the legislature, the, the cabinet, the uh, heads of various executives, as well as the council of states. So this is what refers to as the central government, the central government. Then we come down to what we call board authorities and commissions board authorities and commissions. So these type of public sector organizations represent boards to take care of other things like the public procurement board or public procurement authority. We have commissions, all right? So let's look at them. Commissions consist of public organizations that are clearly part of the government and deliver public programs, goods, and services, but that exists as a separate organization in their own right. So the second categorization of Types of public sector institutions are boards, authorities, and what? Commissions. These ones are part of the government, but they exist on their own. It means they are independent organizations. Some of them can be referred to as the Electoral Commission, the Mineral Commission, the Ghana 
Atomic Agency Commission, among others. So these are all various boards, various authorities. Ghana Procurement Authority is also there in order that you see it. So this is the second categorization of public procurement, sorry, of uh, government uh, types of public sector organizations. Then the final one is the local government. So we have a central government, right? which consists of the entire government so we have the legislature the uh, judiciary we have the council of states we have the heads of executives we have the the cabinet right we talk about parliament that 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 one central government then we come to the boards authority and commissions these are organizations that are part of the government but they exist on their own and they are independent electoral commission the 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 uh, ghana procurement authority also then we come to the local government, okay, the local government. This is made up of the local authorities such as the Metropolitan Municipal District Assembly. So these are the various categorization of public sector uh, organizations. So it can be a central government, it can be a board, authority, or commission, or it can be a local authority in that order now the key question we have to ask ourselves is this why do public sector organizations exist so why must the government or why do these organizations exist why is the electoral commission there why is the ghana police service there why are these public institutions there what is the reason for them so let's look at the purpose for the existence of public sector organizations one to provide goods and services to individual institutions and institutional consumers regardless of their ability to pay yes that's the thing so public sector organizations exist so that they can provide what goods and services to various individuals of various classes of the economy whether you're in the upper class you're in the middle class you're in the local class so irrespective of whether you have the ability to pay or not to pay public sector organizations are there to be able to what, provide a service to you like the Ghana police service among others two to provide goods and services whose investment capital is quite high and hence cannot be provided by the private sector or whose returns are low and therefore unattractive to the private sector though necessary. So there are some goods, there are some services that are important, right? But the capital involved in it is huge. However, if you look at the returns on it, it's less. So it is not attractive to the private sector to undertake. As such, government has to come in, establish system, establish a board, a board, a commission or an authority or a department to be able to what? Take care of such services in that order. Then the next one is to achieve a net social benefit rather than net profit so as to enhance equity of access to meeting uh, needs of water, electricity, food, shelter, transport, health and communication. Right. There has to be an equality for the usage of resources, all other things being equal, so that everybody will have uh, access to basic needs, such as water, such as electricity, such as shelter, such as transport, such as health, such as communication. So government institutions exist so that they can what? provide those social benefits to people in regard to that. Then the next one is to correct inequality which exists among various social classes and communities yes there are various inequalities right we have the upper class we have the middle class or the high class the middle class the lower class right so public sector institution exists so that in a way they can breach these classes even though it is not possible but in a way you can get the basic needs that you want in that order and the last one is to influence future social political economical and financial environmental for optimal growth of the economy so in order for the economy to grow in the future politically so that we can get best brain financially economically we want to uh, our public sector organizations exist so that it can provide capacity to various individuals to various organizations to various institutions in order for those objectives to be achieve in that order so these are what we refer to as reasons why public sector organizations exist and i hope you get the idea there the next thing we want to look at is ways by which 
government controls public companies. So if 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 the institutions are established, operated and financed by the government on behalf of the people, then there has to be a way that we control them, right? Because we can't allow somebody who is a CEO of a public organization to take decision, or we can't allow a certain board of a public organization to just take any decisions they like. So government has to come back now and find out ways to be able to control these public institutions. And so what are the ways through which public institutions are controlled? One. Government powers can be exercised through the appointment of executives and members of the board of management. One, that is there. So because it is established by the government, usually by an act of parliament, on behalf of the public or on behalf of the people, the government, or the president, and with uh, the appointment committee of parliament are going to appoint the executives, okay, the chief executive and then the board of directors. So the government is going to appoint them to be able to take decisions on behalf of the government in relation to the carrying out of their roles and duties. Two, governments can exercise control by giving specific direction concerning prices, production costs, and social goals. That's it, right? Because they exist to provide social benefits to the people. So one way government controls public companies is to give them direction, specific direction as to how much prices has to be charged, how, what, how the service has to be undertaken, how much the cost has to be so that the people can be able to what, handle it or the citizenry can be able to take care of it in that order. Three, government uses the submission of annual reports as an opportunity to evaluate the performance of enterprises yes because at the end of the year government is, a, is supposed to prepare financial statements and as these institutions are part of government they also prepare their financial statement submitted to parliament to the executive arm of government and to the audit general who audits the financial statement so from these financial statements we can be able to measure the performance of the chief executive the performance of the board of uh, directors the performance of the entire institution to be able to see if the institution is achieving its goal or undertaking its objective as it was established for to do then the next one is that public companies need to obtain government approval and guarantees for long-term loans yes so public companies usually cannot get up and go and acquire any long-term loan facility because they are acquiring it in the name of the government okay in the name of the people so it has to be approved by the government it has to be approved by the parliament before they go ahead with the final decision and the final one i want to share with you is that public companies need to obtain government approval for their annual budgets yes they have to prepare budgets to be submitted to the minister of finance and economic planning uh which will be imputed or included in the national budget of the country to be read in parliament so they have to obtain approval as to how their budget has to be prepared how much money that will be allocated to them in the next accounting year what projects they have to undertake by the by them to be able to achieve the entire objective of the government in that order so these are some of the ways through which government controls public companies now the next slide we want to look at is the type of information produced by public sector organizations now public sector organization produce various information various information so we want to go through the types of information that they produce some of them in that order the first one is called statutory information now these are mandatory information that public sector organizations are required to produce by virtue of laws that are used to what establish them so by law these financial institutions, oh, sorry, these institutions are supposed to provide all some statutory information such as um, their budget statements, such as their, uh, uh, um, 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 their budget statements, such as issues about financial statements in that order. So they, it is statutory by law, they are supposed to what, provide those kind of information. So the kind of information that is mandatory by them that is not optional that they have to provide by virtue of the fact that they were established by an act of parliament are what we refer to as what the statutory information right second one is refers to as financial information these include 
All these are information demanded by donors and other funding agencies to be produced by public sector organizations according to stipulated formats. So for instance, if uh, Danida or IMF or uh, whatever, China donates money to a certain public sector organization, they would want to be interested in the financial information in relation to that donation. How was that money spent? was the money spent for the purpose for which the money was donated so maybe the money was donated for the control of malaria for the control of um, ebola for the control of whatever disease they would want to find out about the financial information in relation to that donor money that they have given out then they also produce what we call planning information Planning by spending agencies in Ghana is based on the medium term expenditure framework, which operates on cash basis normally for a period of three years. All spending agencies are expected to prepare their budget on this planning model and report on the progress of their planning, programming, and budgeting scheme. So that is about the planning information. Then we have budgetary information. Budgetary information relates to the utilization of budgets as an instrument of national economic management communicating the resource constraints to spending department reducing gap between plan and actual expenditure and achieving better control of what public expenditure so budgetary information has to do with right how much was spent for them from the appropriation and we'll look at a couple of these things later on as we control or as we go ahead in that order now to one big shot Users of public sector financial information. Users of public sector financial information. Now, there are a lot of users of public sector financial information, and you can see it in your slide there. We have donor communities. Why do they need public sector financial information? To be able to find out whether the fund that they have donated was used the way they were supposed to be used, whether they were used for the purpose and were, was able to achieve the objective. So, donor communities are interested in the financial information of public sector so that they can be able to take decisions as to how the money was spent. The media is also a user of financial information so that they will look at the impact of government operation on the society, right? The whole impact of government operation on the society. So they want to look at the accountability of government. Then economic planning. These are people who make policies in relation to the government, okay, in relation to the policies that has to be taken in various sectors of the economy. Why are they interested in financial information? They want to find out whether government financial information are adequate and received timely for planning what purposes. Taxpayers, right, taxpayers, the two of us. We are there, interested. We want to look out for how much did the government spend. Now, if you don't take care, if you don't take any attention to look at the financial statement of Ghana, then try to get the financial statement of Ghana. Get it for last year. Uh, it may be available now. Get it for last year or last two years. And just come through and go through and try to find out how these things are done. Why are taxpayers interested in that? So that they can determine the consequences of what? Government spending so that they will be able to find out whether it will result in the improvement on the standard of living or whether government is likely to increase taxes or inflation. Other users include regulatory bodies, budget analysts, controller accountant general, auditor general, government uh, trade unions, contractors and suppliers of goods, non-governmental organizations, among other hosts of users of accounting information. Once you have my uh, notes on that, you go through it and they are there. But basically, these users require the information so that they can be able to make specific decisions, measure the accountability of the government, right? That's the keyword. That's the keyword. Accountability of the government, right? How much fund was committed to the government? How much fund was derived, right? Then they also want to find out whether government has pursued what we call value for money, right? So that government spend within the budget, government is uh, what government is undertaking is at a lower cost economy. What government is undertaking is going to bring in possible results, efficiency, and then effectiveness, whether it is achieving the objective for which it was set out. So people are interested or users of financial information are interested because they want to find out how accountable the government is. The government has to be accountable for every spending and then to see 
where that government is spending within budget, all right, within budget in that order in relation to that. Now, let's end our first module on what we call the concept of privatization. What is privatization? Privatization simply refers to the process through which government or, or public owned institution is sold to private individual or either or the government allowing private investors to take greater percentage of ownership and control of public institutions right so privatization simply has to do with the government giving away ownership giving away control of public institution to private investors now why would government do this why would government do this so Policy objectives of uh, privatization, one, to raise foreign exchange because normally this privatization is done and the investors that come in are foreigners from the UK, from America, from China or from wherever. They come in and when they come in, they're going to pay the government in relation to what? Foreign exchange. And you know, government needs these foreign exchange to be able to acquire um, infrastructure facilities, uh, pay for contractors, which are normally foreigners as well. So government does this in order to raise some foreign exchange too, to develop a domestic capital market so that um, government will be able to attract more investors in that order to motivate the private sector. Now, when private sector is taking control and ownership of public sector institution, then that motivates the private sector that, hey, the country is good. The country is open to us. We can be allowed to do business well without control. Then, to reduce the fiscal deficit, because you see, it's expensive financing a lot of this public sector institution. Remember, they are not there to make money. and. Uh, they incur a lot of costs, so all the time there is deficit. So in order to reduce financial deficits of the country, governments can privatize some of these institutions so that they will reduce the deficit so that in future uh, budgets, there will not be any allocation of revenue to these institutions any longer. And finally, to improve the efficiency of the economy by encouraging the private sector participation and investment. So these are some of the policy objectives, that is, what the government wants to achieve and behind what he wants to achieve or for the purpose of what he wants to achieve, so he now privatized some of these institutions. Now, when government privatize institutions, public institutions, what happens? What are the advantages for it? One, privatization leads to lower prices and greater supply. Yep. We can agree with that, yes, because now when there's privatization, a private individual is going to come in, there's competition in the market, so once there's competition, supply is going to be greater. Now, when supply is greater, more goods or services are being rendered, but the company is going to enjoy economic of scale. So once it is enjoying economies of scale, then it means that cost will reduce. Once cost is reducing, but price is going to be low. Next, it provides a one-off cash boost for government to be used in other areas like schools and hospitals. Yes, once the government privatize, that huge amount of money is received. Now, when the huge amount of money is received, governments can now use that money into another project like constructing a school, constructing a hospital, constructing a road, or building a factory, something like that, in that order. Third, the government can... The private enterprises it's more responsive to customer complaints and innovation. So one of the advantages is that once they are privatized, now the private organization is going to come in. And remember, private institutions are interested in providence, so they don't joke with customers. If you look at the uh, behavior of some civil servants, some civil servants in public institutions, you go there and the way they are even talking to you it is not something that encourages you to do business there, right? To do business there. But when a private sector comes in, private sectors are taking their customers. The customer is the king in the market. So they're going to take care of their customers. They are going to pay attention to the customers. So that relationship with customers is going to what? be more satisfactory in that order. And the next one is that competition in privatization increases differentiation so because privatization will lead to competition there's not going to be differentiation so there's going to be a lot of variety of the same services varieties of the same products 
among others, and also save taxpayers' money. Because if there is a public institution that is making losses, that is giving money every time, but they are not uh, achieving the objective for which they were established, then privatizing them will save taxpayers' money, so that the taxpayers' money will not be pushed into that loss-making, no social benefit uh, investment or business any longer. But there is a disadvantage. Everything good has a bad side. So, yes, we're going to get more money. Yes, taxpayers' money will be saved. Yes, customer service will be good. Yes, prices will be low. Yes, we're going to have uh, efficiency and improvement in the services of that institution. Yes, all these are good, but there are some disadvantages. One, it is expensive and generate a lot of income and fees for specialized uh, services or advisors, yes, because you see, sometimes when those institutions are privatized, quote unquote, they enjoy some level of monopolistic um, market or behavior. So, as such, they become authority and uh, they, 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 prices, they, they charge high prices for the products that they or the service that they render. Public monopolies have been turned into private monopolies with too little competition to co uh, so consumers suffer. That is what I just said. So most of these companies are going to enjoy monopoly in that order. Nationalized industries were sold off too quickly and too cheaply. Sometimes, sometimes, so they, 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 we, we sell them too quickly, too cheaply. Now, if you value the company and you look at the amount of money government is taking from the investor, it is too cheap, it is too small, but government does it in all other. Then it creates unemployment because there will be layouts after the purchases. Because uh, if private sector comes, those lazy people that were there that their business was not doing well, all of you or almost all of you off. We're going to lay you off and employ new people, or we're going to lay everybody off. You reapply for the job. So there's going to be definitely unemployment in that order. Then share ownership. Did not really happen as many small investors took their profit and did not buy anything else. So that is what we mean by some of the disadvantages in public sector privatization. Finally, we want to look at the differences between government accounting and private sector accounting. So what are the differences between um, accounting in the private sector and accounting in the public sector. Now, this is going to be a discussion moment, right? It's going to be a discussion. I'm not going to give you everything, but it's going to be a discussion. What do you think are some of the differences between the public sector and the private sector uh, organizations? So let's look at a couple of them. One, accounting basis or concepts. That's the first thing. Private sector prepare financial statement using what we call the accrual basis. Ends there. But the public sector prepares financial statement using the cash basis. Recently, Ghana is gradually, gradually upgrading into the accrual basis. So that is the first difference. Two. The second difference is in relation to issues about the accounting concepts or systems, if you want. Basically, in the private sector, we look at something like the business entity concept. We look at something like the uh, going concern concept. We look at something like the um, prudence concept, right? These are fundamental accounting concepts or bases or systems. But when it comes to the, private uh, the public sector, we are looking at issues such as vote accounting, commitment accounting, fund accounting, among others. That is another difference between these two. Then third... Preparation of financial statements. Preparation of financial statements. The private sector prepare financial statements according to the generally accepted accounting principles. GAP. So that is how the private sector prepares their financial statement. But the public sector, they prepare their financial statement based on a lot of things, such as the um, 1992 constitution, so the laws, the regulations, uh, policies. Uh, system structures, all the laid down procedure, the act that was used to establish that public sector institution in that order. Then financial statements, financial statements. 
Now, in the private sector, the private sector prepares financial statements such as the statement of in, the income statement and other comprehensive income, and the statement of financial position, statement of changes in equity, the cash flow statement, and uh, notes to the account. In the private, in the public sector also. Government prepares a couple of these, but the names are going to be a little bit different because in the private sector, it has what we call a cash book. Rather, when we come to the public sector, there is nothing like a cash book. Rather, we refer to as the receipt and payment account. Also, in the private sector, when we are preparing the income statement and other comprehensive income, we are looking at revenue and expenses, right? But in the private sector, we're going to categorize these two. All revenues are going to be on one side from various sources, grants and other things. Then all expenditure is going to be on the other side. Then another thing about financial statement is that private sector records net profit or loss, but the, private se uh, the public sector records surplus or deficit surplus or deficit so these are some of the things in relation to uh, the public sector and the private sector accounting so what have we discussed in this module we've considered what public sector accounting is we've defined what a government is we've looked at what government accounting is we consider the various types of uh, public sector organizations, we look at the information provided by public sector organizations, we considered how government controls public sector organizations and even how the government, the uh, reason why government establishes this public sector organizations, then we consider we consider the users of public sector organizations, then we look at the concept of privatization. So these are what you have to understand when we talk about the introduction to public sector accounting and finance. So that is it about the first module. See you in the next module that is called Basis of Public Sector Accounting. See you there.